Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at Justin's Fish Room and today our video is going to be about discus as you know by the title of the thumbnail and Britt's going to be um, the driver for today and we're really excited because we're going to go see a friend of ours, uh, their facility, it's a smaller facility, um, just filled of discus fish so yeah it's going to be really cool and I hope you guys enjoy. Alrighty so we're here in Daniel's Fish Room and it's kind of just a shed, but it's really, really awesome how he's done it. What are the parameters of these tanks, Daniel? Um, I don't really change parameters. Um, I change consistency. Yeah. So whatever the tap water is, that's what they're kept at. So my tap water is usually about 772. Um, so that's what they'll be sitting at. And then if I really want to try and spark some breeding, I'll put a little bit of discus buffer in, but usually it's just tap water all the time. Oh, that's awesome. And so, what type of discus do you have in these tanks at the moment? Like this big blue diamond? Yeah, that's a big blue diamond by Lee Chi Tong. Yep. Um, you got the Red Magnus. Uh, they're by Robert Lim. Actually, no, Lee Chi Tong. The checkerboard's Lee Chi Tong. That's a checkerboard there. And then the Super Panthera. That's by Robert Lim. Wow. So, for those of you who don't know, Robert Lim and all these other breeders that Daniel is talking about are very very well known uh, discus breeders and they export to, to here in Australia? Yeah here in Australia, the States, uh, anywhere overseas um, and then next week we've just uh, partnered up with Jaeger Discus so next week Jaeger's coming in so... Is well, that German? Is no, that... still Malaysian. Still Malaysian. Okay. Um, and so we're gonna get Stardust in, um, Super Yellows which is the Albino Valencias Wow. Um, super red Jaegers, and then what I would classify probably the best Samaras out there on the market yep. are coming in next week. Oh, that's awesome. So, oh, that's awesome. And you've got some empty tanks here, so I'm assuming you're going to be filling those with discus soon as well. Yeah, filling them up. Um, the three down the bottom, they're going to be for holding tanks uh, for people that have pre ordered. Yep. Um, and then the other ones are going to be used as sale tanks. And behind me, once I finish it up, getting a six foot by two by two. Oh, awesome. Um, as a display. So anything that doesn't sell, or, or I wouldn't say doesn't sell, but I'll be sitting on for a fair bit, they'll go in here and then anyone that wants them, they can pick them out and then sell them. Oh, cool. And what are the dimensions of these tanks? Uh, so they're three by two by one and a half. So they're eight, 850, 600 deep and then 450 tall. Wow, okay. And that's perfect for yeah, 230 holding litres. Wow, that's perfect. And can you just uh, explain to the, the audience what these guys are? Because these seem like very interesting discus that not many people really know about. Yeah, so they're red calicos. So they're prepper IP. Yeah. So a very unique strain. If you put them in a darker tank, you get some more grey in them. Um, uh, they're sometimes known as Picasso Reds. Um, For obvious they, reasons, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of the reds. Yeah. Um, and then the Fuji Reds, which kind of look pink at the moment. Yep. Uh, by Rob Lim. Wow. So for those of you who don't know, IP is probably, is that still number one? IP is the cream of the crop still, currently. Yeah. Um, but there, will be, there are other farms out there that are pushing IP to, um, to their well, trying to improve. Yeah, um, so kind of a bit of healthy competition going on. Yeah, well we got some really good local breeders, um, East Coast. I don't have any of their fish in at the moment, Yeah. but I got to see what's coming through. And it's um, a red cover with an ICA bar. It's um, to die for. Oh, that's awesome. And these here, these are obviously wild. Yeah, so is... they're red forest. Yep. Um, so they're a a red floor up cross with a wild, so wow. you get that nice brown base with yeah. the red lines coming through. And these are probably my favourite discus. Yeah. All the wilds and the heckles and that sort of thing. But yeah, these are awesome. Yeah, if you like your wilds, you like the computers that are coming in. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah. We got some, and then there's some wilds coming in as well. And what about some red ickers? Are you gonna have any of those coming in? I don't know. Um, the red ICAs, they're, they're a bit hard. Together, they're one in like a million. 
they're really hard to come by. Oh, uh, fair enough. Um, well, I can see why, because... And they're called ICA, not ICA? Yeah, ICA. ICA, okay. Um, and as I said, there's, uh, there's some ones that will come through, and um, it will definitely blow the market. So, uh, and how do you heat... Like, you've obviously got heaters, but do you have central heating as well? No central heating, so pretty much the sun will heat it up. Yep. It'll stay nice and toasty. Um, you got insulation there yeah, as well? Foil insulation, blade. and then once it's done, you'll heat to a certain temp. Sometimes the tanks will get up to 32, 33, and I won't touch them. I can turn okay. heaters off. Yeah. Like the ones with the red calicos and the Fuji reds, the hottest that's reach is about 34 degrees. Okay. But the heater's completely off. Wow. So if that, it's just where it's located beside the air pumps and in the corner. Yeah. That's just the spot that radiates the most amount of heat. Okay. And so I see you're running off sponge filters, so that's just off yeah. air. And I do that as well. I mean, I find that's the easiest thing to do yeah. with a fisher room. Mm. Uh, these sponge filters are actually from Petworks. Yeah. Uh, I've customised them. So okay. the standard Petworks one will give you big bubbles. Yep. I've gone in and then cut the center pillar out and then stuck an air stone in there oh, so okay. that it creates a smaller bubble stream and oh. more uplift so that it's not blah 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 oh, it's that's smaller good. bubbles and I mean your temperature in this tank for example is 30 degrees celsius so you really want to maximize aeration hey because yeah. I mean for those of you who don't know uh, oxygen actually gets sequestered into the water a bit better in cooler water so you really do need a lot of aeration to make sure that the discus are getting what they need yeah. in terms of oxygen. So I think that's that's brilliant what you've done with that with that custom yeah. aerator. But and what's down here? Let's have a look. Um, they're all by IP. So you got Galaxy Turquoise and then Snow Whites as well. Wow, those Snow Whites are pretty awesome. Yeah. And these aren't albino because they don't have the pink eye. No. And more. So, like, what you need to remember anything that is white will pepper yeah anything that has an albino gene won't okay so like the red stardust that are coming in next week they won't pepper okay and that's because albino they have a complete lack of pigment yeah whereas these guys would have some sort of pigment yeah but this the red stardust are like a um red uh, is a red valentine or a Snow leopard or something yep. that you know I'll have to find find it from my nose, but it's a genetic that won't pepper. Wow. This guy's awesome. Yeah. So is this also a wild flora as well? Or? No, galaxy. Still a galaxy, wow. Yeah. It's got nice barring on him here. Yeah. Well they're they're IPs. Yeah. So some of them will turn out to into nice big stunning fish. Yeah. Oh that's awesome. So what else could we be expecting over the next few months uh, from Brisbane Discus? Finishing off this display tank, um, mainly getting in Jaeger next, so yep. focusing on that. Um, I do know what there will be a lot of coming in, there's some really good ones coming in in the next month or so. We've got some wilds coming in, um, so when I say wilds, you've got your Anuna Red Royals, um, your Capuras, Yep. Uh, I, there might be some blue heckles coming through, blue moon heckles. Oh wow, those so are going to look so nice. Yeah. If I can get some blue moon heckles, I'll throw them in the display tank. Um, yeah. Because you can't really find blue moons around. And you said that you have some good local breeders as well, and you're willing to source from them as well? Uh, yeah, um, there's one that we mainly go through is East Coast. Yeah. Um, East Coast works really closely with uh, Oz Discus where I get all these fish from, so... Oh, awesome. That's why I said I, I've got the opportunity to go see their breeding facility, um, and there's big things coming through from them, so... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I actually saw that on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, you were with... Darren, is it his name, or...? Uh, no, it's uh, Jules and uh, Pepper. Oh, okay, yeah. The three-foot tanks, they're from East Coast. Oh, wow. They're such nice tanks as well. Yeah. That's awesome. And is this a lot of work? Is that even... No, not that much work. work. Oh, it's um, not. Okay. Yeah. Once, once you get it going, it's like all the plumbing is pretty simple. The main, main time is just making sure that it's nice and clean. Yep. And um, your plumbing is all automatic here. Yeah. Just 
Just and bulbs and things? The bells and things come straight outside into the garden, so the garden gets a good nice feed. Oh, awesome. Um, and then I just got to make sure the sponge filters are nice and healthy. Oh, cool. Nice and clean. And so, these porous rocks here, uh, can you explain to the audience what those are? So, they're marine pure bioballs. Um, so in our sumps and canister filters, we usually have ceramic noodles or something similar along the lines. So the big round, darker looking ones, they're marine pure. And then the smaller one, the white ones, are maxi spec. Oh, okay. So there's two different types. Um, marine pure tends to break down slightly. Uh, the maxi spec won't. So just a bit more compact. A bit more compact, and it's a different design as well. Yeah. And that just helps with um, surface area for bacteria. Yeah. So and since I don't have a canister or anything on there, and I'm doing daily water changes. We use the bioballs or bio blocks to hold beneficial bacteria. Yeah. Because we're cleaning out the sponges so frequently, as well as changing water, we need something that the bioballs really can hold on to and grow over time. That's awesome. And I noticed you have yeah some big blocks of it as well. Yeah. So the benefit with the big blocks is if in the big tanks, if you get a pair, they usually lay on the blocks, so okay. we can actually see them. Yeah. Um, but. Usually I would go for fire balls just to give the fish a bit more swimming space. That's awesome. Okay, and what about your racking system here? So is this... Uh, this is from East Coast, they had it. Okay. Uh, it's Dexian. Alright. So proper pallet racking. Uh, and then I just use uh, MDMF or Marine Fly, something yep. strong enough to support it. And then a layer of foam or uh, uh, whatever that black stuff is from park rather like foam. Oh yeah. And then that's all the tanks sit on. Oh that's awesome. It's pretty simple but like it obviously works, you know, it works very yeah. well. I think that's that's the biggest um, kind of philosophy that you need to stick by is being as simple as possible and Yeah. I if think you keep that's it simple secret. you're gonna keep the fish happy. Yeah. Um but saying that if I do have a sick fish in here um I will treat it. Yeah but I would prefer to take it out and put it into a quarantine facility. Yeah. Uh, and I do have quarantine tanks in the house, which no one really gets to see. Yeah. Uh, they're for my own personal use. Um, just so that nothing gets cross contaminated out here. Yeah. And then all the nets get washed daily. Yeah, that's good. So there's no cross contamination. And how do you wash those nets? Just with chlorine water or? Yeah, tap water. Okay. Just nice and simple. Yeah. You, you can get the fancy stuff to disinfect the nets. The tap water is going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Give it a good rinse with your tap water, rub it, rub it thoroughly, and you're good. Ah, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, this is really, really cool. A lot of um, my followers are actually discus yeah. fanatics, so and they always get to see rams and that sort of thing. But um, obviously, mom has her red covers, yeah, and they're starting to get ready to breed. Mm. Well, they've been getting ready for like two months <laughs> now, but. Um, so yeah, they don't really get to see much about discus and I think this is a really good opportunity for the viewers to get their pellets yeah. a little bit right, wet. Right, I was saying to you yeah. off, off camera, the ship is coming in next week so we might try and see for you guys to come back over and actually see what's coming in. Oh, that would be great, yeah. So, because there's some fish that people won't have seen yeah. out there. Awesome. Um, Alrighty guys, so um, with Daniel's uh, business that he's got going on here, we're going to make sure that we put all the links to uh, everything that we need uh, for you guys to get some discus locally in Brisbane um, in the description down below. So make sure you go have a look at that. And Daniel's a really nice guy. Uh, he and I have been chatting fish for ages, built up a bit of a friendship uh, surrounding fish. So I can vouch for him 100 million percent. So if you are in Brisbane and you're looking for discus, go to his, uh, his Facebook page. Yeah. That would be the best way to do it. So. I'll put all that information in the description. Okay, is there anything else you want to add just before? No, nah, not really, except that there's big things coming. And I mean, when I say big things, there are big things coming. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, we're excited to see what those things are, yeah. Yeah, like, the, the display tank, once that's set up and running, there's going to be some nice tap fish in there. Yeah. Like, there won't be my personal fish, um, so it'll allow people, to, if they come in, see it, want it, they can buy it. Um, but I know there's going to be pairs pairing off in here 
so there'll be some good opportunities for anyone that wants to breed. There'll be some pairs available, um, awesome. as well as there's definitely going to be other pairs and other unique strains coming in. Um, yeah, well, at least <laughs> at least we've got a local seller now because I think Brit's going to soon um, get a little bit annoyed at me because. I feel like most of my paycheck will be coming <laughs> in the future, but yeah. But yeah, like there's some stunning ones coming and it's like, if if they get onto the Facebook page and they join the members group, um, once fish are ready to be announced, yep. it'll get posted all over there. Awesome. And it's like if they find something that they love, they can reach out, um, I'll talk to them privately about yep. prices and when it's going to be available. Yep. Um, and then if they if they want to commit, then I can definitely get it in for it. And that's a benefit with um, having something. If I don't have it in stock when you see it, mm. I can get it. And it's like oh, that's awesome. So oh, that's really cool. And just before we go, Brett, which one's your favourite? Oh, uh, probably the are you the checkerboard. The checkerboard, that one there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you might like him. They're beautiful. We might have to get you some. Yes. <laughs> you can look after them, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably kill them. Alright, thank you so much, Daniel. And That's alright. Really appreciate pleasure. the visit. And yeah, we'll definitely be around again to see what you have in stock. Because, yeah. I mean, this is just so exciting that we've got someone as good at keeping fish and discus fish in particular yeah. as you doing this sort of work. So, yeah, very, very exciting. Yeah. Sorry, just before I go, I actually didn't um, remember to film these guys, but look how amazing these platinums are. These are just stunning fish, and you can just see the health of them. They're nice and thick, you know, they're eating well, nice vivid colors, and those eyes are just amazing. So again, if you're really keen for some good quality discus fish, um, check out my description. Daniel always responds to you and he's always very, very friendly and helpful. So, yeah, just go go check out his Facebook page. Alrighty, everyone. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this discus special. Um, if you guys do want to see more discus stuff, um, let me know in the comments down below. There'll be heaps of amazing projects happening here at Brisbane Discus. Um, and it'll probably just get bigger and bigger and bigger as more and more people find out about him. Um, he's got some amazing fish as you can see behind me and in that tank there and everywhere. It's just really, really awesome. So if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what's happening in you guys' fish tanks. As always, happy fish keeping and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.